Alright, hey, I know you missed my voice. Ha ha, just kidding. Okay, uh, the student will be able to identify and represent patterns that describe linear functions. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at a situation and we're going to be able to describe and represent a linear, a straight line function. Okay, two words, a few words that we need to know. Dependent variable uh, is a change in response to another variable. So a dependent variable is the variable that changes. Uh, the independent variable is not reliant upon the other one. It's the one that, that dis determines itself. Okay? Uh, we'll talk about examples of that in just a minute. Uh, inputs, those are the independent variables. And so we plug anything we want to in, and what comes out is the dependent variable, or called the output. Okay, so those are some words that you need to write down and know. Okay, so in this diagram below, what is the relationship between the number of rectangles and the perimeter of the figure they form? Okay. So we are to do three things. We are to represent it using a table, using words, an equation, and a graph. Okay, so... We look at it, we say, okay, there's one rectangle and its perimeter is 14. There are two rectangles and its perimeter is 16. There are three, perimeter, three triangles and its perimeter is 18. So what we have is we have this, okay? We have a table x is the independent variable y is the dependent x is the number of rectangles y is the perimeter so the more rectangles the perimeter changes so with one rectangle it has a perimeter of 14 with two it has a perimeter of 16 with three it has 18 with four it has 20 so on and so forth so that is the table Oops. What I'm, okay, there we go. Moved it back. Okay, so there's the table. Here is words. Okay, so we multiply the number of rectangles in each figure by 2 to get the total length at the top and bottom sides of the combined figure. Then we add 2 times 6 or 12 which is the two sides, left and right side. So two times x, x represents the number of rectangles. Two times x plus 12 gives us the perimeter. Okay, so that is a way to look at how it is. So in words, we would write it out this way. We take the 12, there's uh, another six over here. So we always have 12, so I would do 12, and then I would add to it, you see there's one rectangle and there's one up here, two rectangles, two, three rectangles, three, so two times x, because we have this side and this side, and that is equal to y, so y is equal to 2x plus 12. All right, and then we have the graph. So we had, you, you remember from this part, we had those ordered pairs. So we're gonna plot those ordered pairs and that's gonna be our graph. So we, would, we plot the ordered pairs, one comma 14, two comma 16, three comma 18, four comma 20, and those, that's our linear equation. Okay. All right, let's look at another one. In the diagram below, what is the relationship between the number of triangles and the perimeter of the figure they form? The number of triangles and the perimeter. So we are going to represent it as a table. So the first thing we do is we make our table. Okay, X is going to represent the number of triangles. Y will represent the perimeter. Okay. 
So, if I have one triangle, which is right here, I have a perimeter of 10. Two triangles is a perimeter of 14. Three triangles, uh, we've got 7, 7, that's 14, plus 4 is 18. If we have four triangles, we have a perimeter of 7, 7, so 14, 18, 22, so 22, okay? That's the table. All right. Now, if we take in words, we multiply number of triangles by four, then add six. Okay, you'll notice that there's one four. When there's two triangles, there's two fours. When there's three triangles, there's three fours. When there's four triangles, there are four fours. There are always six on either side. Okay, so we're going to take the number of triangles times four plus six, and that's going to give us y. y is equal to 4x plus 6. Uh, and then we would graph it, so I'm just going to do that really quickly. Uh, 10, counting by fives. Here we'll count by ones. So one and ten. Two and fourteen. Three and eighteen. Four and twenty-two. So those are the points. Okay. Okay. Uh, the word function. Uh, the relationship that pairs each input value with exactly one output value one input value with one output value. Uh, and the function, a linear function, is a function whose graph is a non-vertical line or part of a non-vertical line. So it needs to be a straight line, um, but not straight up and down. Okay. Uh, okay, last one. The table shows the relationship between the number of photos X you take and the amount of memory Y in megabytes left on your camera's memory chip. Is the relationship a linear function? Describe the relationship using words, an equation, and a graph. So is it linear is the first question. So what we need to do is we need to look at it as a chart. Okay, We already have the chart over here. So notice that the memory is changing by three megabytes and the independent variable is increasing okay, each time so that is the first way to start and then we have this so three times the number of photos taken subtracted from 512 gives us how much is left so the amount of memory left on the chip is 512 minus the quantity three times the number of photos. So for one photo, it's minus three. For two photos, it's minus six. For three photos, it's minus nine. Okay. So in this case, it goes straight down like that. Those are the dots. If we don't take zero, we've got 512. If we take one, we've got 509. If we've got two, we've got 506. Three, 503, so on and so forth. So therefore, yes, it is a linear function straight line it's non-vertical there you have it okay. once again weird chapter bear with it do the best you can all right here is the check yourself the lesson check is what it's called and uh, hopefully that makes sense I'll see you tomorrow see ya